Um, so why different breathing techniques, which is actually rather appropriate to that question. We're going to list a few breathing techniques that we know about. Uh, rib reserve. Well, this is about breathing out, all of these. With rib reserve, what you tend to do is raise the ribs to breathe in and then hold them raised. Now, the purpose of this, and this is really important, is that you hold the air back from the vocal folds. When you raise the ribs and you hold them there, you are keeping the size of the chest cavity big. And that means the pressure is going to drop eventually as you go on singing out. So the purpose of rib reserve is to hold air away from the vocal folds, and we'll tell you why that might work later. Sumo. It's uh, our little pet phrase for this, which is breathe in and push down. Absolutely. It's a bit more polite than talking about toilet breathing. Yep. Um, and again, I, this is when you're singing, the, the feeling is that you bear down to sing. Now, this again holds the air away from the vocal folds. The only reason that we say NB, which is it encourages false vocal fold participation, it encourages constriction, and it also encourages the true vocal folds to do effort closure. So although you might get some, some bang for your buck, as it were, we, this is the one that we think you shouldn't really be doing. Absolutely. It'll close the vocal folds, so you often get a stronger sound, and I think this is why people teach it. Yeah. We're, we're going to do an experiment with these in we a minute are. anyway. Uh, the third one is abdominal. Now, the abdominal uh, breathing style, this one doesn't hold the air away from the vocal folds, it feeds it up to the vocal folds. Uh, and if you're not used to it, it can feel quite weird because you're going to feel like you're being asked to push the breath out. Yep. Yeah. And then the fourth one is upper chest. Upper chest breathing encourages you to take in a higher air pressure much more quickly, so it's really only good for what we call life and death breathing. Yeah, and you're not going to be able to get a lot in no. while you're doing that. It really is, the, it's like the, the top-up breath. So it's a, a, a small space and high-ish pressure. Yes. So, we so, want you to do an yeah, exercise. Yeah, okay. And I think the best thing to do is for you to count one to five on the out-breath, just to experience what you're doing. Mm. So for rib reserve, I would suggest that you put your hands around your lower ribs where you get the most swing, and then breathe in. And the idea is that you swing your ribs out when you breathe in and you hold them out. Absolutely. So that as you're counting one to five, I'll just do one of these with you. Uh, you're aiming to keep the ribs up. One, two, three, four, five. Can you actually connect the words so that we, we're sure that you aren't stopping the breathing? Oh, you meanie. No, this is, this is about connected oh. sound. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. OK, um, so we're going to leave you ten seconds to do that by yourselves. By the way, we can't hear you, so please do it. The neighbours will love it. Off you go. OK, now we're going to go on to the next one, which is sumo. For this one, we want you to take the air in and bear down while you are speaking. Yes, so what will happen here is that you will feel your, um, your stomach, it'll feel like your stomach expands as you breathe in. It'll push out slightly. And we want you to hold it out, keep it pushed out and down as you count. Yes. Off you go. Now for the next one, abdominal breathing, we want you to release the abdominal wall as you breathe in and then pull it in gently as you speak. Absolutely. What you'll find is you probably don't need to pull it in much at all for the first count for number one, but that as you continue through the five, you may need to sort of push up, pull up and in to feed the sound with air. So, off you go. OK, and the fourth one, upper chest. For this one, we want you to hold your abdominal wall in, 
and hold your ribs as well so that they don't move and just take a very high up breath and use that. Off you go. Now what we'd like you to do is just to type in some comments about uh, did you notice any differences? If you did, what were they? If you didn't, let us know. If it all mm. felt the same, let us know that too. Um, Terry said, uh, number one felt stilted. That's very interesting. So mm -hmm. it felt, it feels like you're holding mm. with the rib reserve. Yeah. Abdominal breath feels really long and supported. That's Charlotte. Yeah. Very interesting. And bear in mind that there will probably be one that you use more than the others. Sumo feels very clenched. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. I didn't feel much difference, but I'm intrigued as I tend to use the sumo one. That's very yeah. interesting, Sarah. Uh, back muscles are expanding. I felt quite a lot of pressure with the sumo exercise. Mm. Rib reserve, you can really feel pulling on the back. Yes, I Scott. think there's something yes. in that. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. it, it is, in fact, one of the advantages of uh, using rib breathing. Yes. So, I mean, if, if you're going to use an awareness exercise like this, which you might well do with your own students, one of the things you should do is get them to speak, to, to do their counting at the same speed. Mm. And then, of course, if you wanted to, they could do it on one note. That would be a very useful awareness exercise. Mm. Sheila has said, I use a combination of three, but not the sumo. That's fairly normal, Sheila. I think people mm. use, if people are not told what to do they will often use combinations uh, and the other thing that can happen is that when you do the abdominal breath because the diaphragm lowers and you get a good lung full of air the ribs will lift in any case according to gravity and you can then co-opt uh, a little bit of, of rib reserve for stabilization and I know I'm preempting Jeremy, well, but that's certainly what right. I do when I sing classically. Yeah, um, and what you'll also find, and we'll, we're going to go into this in just a moment, is that it depends what vocal style and what sound you are singing, which breath style might be better. Mm, that's certainly what we've found. Uh, but you've got the message that the sumo probably isn't a good thing to do because it takes the airflow away from the vocal folds. And it encourages extra pressure that you don't need. Alas, it is still live and kicking on the internet. Yes, we found a, a mention of it yesterday, which was like, oh dear. So, uh, that was the end of section one, and we're now going on to... Um, oh yes, by the way, I forgot to say this, rib and abdominal are opposites. And the reason I wanted to say this is when you do rib reserve, you're holding air away from the vocal folds, and when you do abdominal, you're feeding air towards the vocal folds. So to be honest, if you're doing a balanced version of both of them at the same time, it's sort of pointless mm -hmm. because they hold each other back. Oh, now I'm going to have a little moment of disagreement because I think the kind of combination that Sheila's talking about and that I talk about is uh, using the abdominal breath and using rib stabilization so that you're actually allowing the ribs to move down slowly. Whereas proper rib reserve, which is what we asked you guys to do, uh, was to keep the ribs held out at all times. Now I am talking about, I'm being very literal because I'm talking about 50% of each. And if you have 50% of each, the air will be absolutely still yeah. and won't move. Okay, in that strict form, yes. yes. thank you. So we're both <laughs> right, I love that. 